We are speaking with Roberto Fernandez Galan, PhD, Assistant Professor of Neurosciences at Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland. Uh, Dr. Galan, you've been involved in recent brain imaging research showing that autistic children's brains produce more, um, if you will, noise at rest than do the brains of children without the disorder. Can you tell us a little more uh, about your research in this area? Sure, and uh, uh, well, thanks for uh, your interest in this research. Um, basically, we started with a very fundamental project, a very uh, a project that is um, fundamental research, um, based on uh, computer modeling and um, uh, the theory of how the brain works. We know that there is a universal mathematical model to describe brain activity at rest. This is very important because that model is quite simple and you can fit actual data uh, to that model and then you can gain some information by doing that. In particular, um, two things that we can do with that model is to um, infer how different connections or actually measure uh, quite reliably how different areas of the brain interact with each other. Um, and another thing that we can do is we can estimate how much information the brain is creating. And I'm going to give you, um, you know, uh, some examples of what I mean by those two things. One is the connectivity of the brain, the functional connectivity, how different parts of the brain interact with each other. And the other one is about the information concept. So regarding the functional connectivity, one thing that we so, and it was quite significant, is that in these children uh, who were autistic, um, in particular they had Asperger's syndrome, um, there was enhanced um, connectivity, enhanced interactions between the frontal area of the brain and the parietal area. So basically those are the areas involved in decision making as well as in sensory processing. Um, that was one finding. The other finding that you were referring to more specifically in your question is about the noise uh, of the brain. I think that's a very confusing term, so let me uh, explain a little bit more in detail what we mean by that. Uh, what we mean is really information. What we did was um, analyze brain activity the same way an engineer would analyze activity that is coming out of your computer, for example. There are very precise means of quantifying how much information a given device is generating. So we applied those same techniques to brain activity and we found that the autistic children at rest, without having any uh, particular stimulation, they were creating more information. They seemed to have like more active brains, not in terms of you know having more activity, but having some more complex activity, and therefore creating more information. So um, those are hard data. If you take the tools from engineering and quantify information as an engineer would do, uh, that's what you see. Now we can discuss about the interpretation of those results. And the way we interpret that, in particular, is that they are creating more information at rest because they have a richer inner life that might correlate as well with, uh, you know, the withdrawal into themselves mm -hmm. and uh, therefore the lack of social interactions as well. This can be really very interesting to uh, interesting research to the community pediatrician who's progressively more and more as years go on his waiting room is is really filled with more of these types of, of children um, what what are some of the key takeaways do you think for these pediatricians uh, should they should they order brain imaging um, or send these patients patients to uh, pediatric neurologists right so I think the study that we made is a pilot study. We only had 10 controls and about 10 um, autistic children as well, but the results were very significant. So what we think we have is a very um, promising biomarker for autism or at least for um, Asperger's syndrome within the mm -hmm. whole autistic spectrum. So I think in the future, 
um, methods like the one that we have developed might be very valuable to diagnose um, autism. Um, and in fact, that's what we are proposing. We are proposing that this is like a very, this is potentially a very reliable biomarker. Obviously, to make the transition to the um, clinical practice, we will need to replicate the same results with a larger population <laughs> of children. Right now, we don't have the resources for doing that, but it would be great if we could. And um, another thing that I should say is that the imaging technique that we used, which is not in, in, in a strict sense imaging, we, uh, we use magnetoencephalography. But you know, every big hospital has one of those facilities. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it seems to be much more valuable for this kind of analysis that we are proposing to do uh, as compared to functional magnetic resonance, for example. Okay. The reason for that is that fMRI, uh, functional magnetic resonance imaging, doesn't have enough temporal resolution, is not fast enough mm -hmm. to capture features of activity that are instrumental for us to determine whether a child has autism or not. So, um, uh, you know, our method seems to be more suited for uh, MEG for uh, the uh, magnetoencephalogram. Mm -hmm. And probably also with the electroencephalogram, but we are not, we haven't tested it yet, so I mm -hmm. cannot tell. But I think that down the road, it will be possible to diagnose with high accuracy uh, just based on, on looking at, at brain activity. That's fascinating, and, and uh, I, I'm sure that. Uh, the pediatricians and, and the parents of these children and the children themselves as they grow older are going to be really interested in, in seeing how this research progresses. Um, uh, Roberto Fernandez Galan, Assistant Professor of Neurosciences at Case Western Reserve University, thank you again so much for talking with us about this um, fascinating research. Thank you very much um, for your interest, and I'm I'm happy to reach out also to the pediatricians if they are interested in some sort of uh, collaboration to uh, to test how translational this finding is. Uh, that would be great too. Okay, well, thank you very much. We uh, really appreciate your your time and input.